In this video we're looking at bond energies. Now that's 5C1 if you're looking at AP chemistry uh, frameworks. So this particular uh, framework is asking us to think about how long is this bond from this atom to this atom. So if we call this atom A and this atom B, that bond length is the position around where these atoms vibrate. You know, they're in constant motion and maybe a little further apart sometimes, a little closer together. They're moving around in circles. But this um, minimum potential energy, this place where they're located, is the balance between the attractive forces say of the nucleus of atom A and these electrons here for atom B that are being shared in this bond. But there's also, if you try to push them closer together, there's going to be repulsive forces between the nuclei or between the electrons of atom B and the electrons that are here in the core of atom A. So by definition, <clears throat> bond length is that distance that they find those two forces at equilibrium. Now if you have two atoms that are far apart, they feel no attractive force. There is no attractive force between them, nothing to pull them closer together. But if they come somewhere closer together, the amount of potential energy decreases. And so we're seeing a decrease here. You could also think of that as it's going to take more kinetic energy to pull them apart. So the atoms will naturally be attracted to the nucleus of one atom for the electrons in the other atom. And at some point right here, that is where the potential energy is the lowest. Or you could also think of it as this is where it's going to take the greatest amount of kinetic energy to pull these atoms apart. The depth of this well right here, the depth of that well is the bond energy approximately. That's how much kinetic energy it's going to take to pull these atoms apart. If we try to push them even closer together, there's going to be repulsive forces of the neutrons of one atom excuse me, there's going to be repulsive forces of the electrons of one atom and the electrons for the other. And so the potential energy increases, or we should say the kinetic energy that required to pull them back a little bit further apart decreases. By definitions, it is important to understand that breaking a bond requires an input of energy, so the system, that bond, would have a positive change in enthalpy. So by definition, bond breaking is always a positive number. Bond breaking always requires an input of energy. So if you're going from O2 and splitting the O2 apart just to make two oxygens, that's going to require an input of 495 kilojoules per mole. Now, Hopefully it makes sense to you then that if we just reverse that reaction, the opposing processes will have the same magnitude of energy. All we'll do is change the sign. So making a bond and going from two oxygens to O2 is going to release 495 kilojoules per mole for this reaction. So bond energy, by definition, is the energy required to break a bond. So often we have tables that look like this to help us get an idea of the approximate bond energy for different kinds of bonds. And you'll notice here, of course, that the bond energy for a double bond between two carbon atoms is different than the bond energy for three covalent bonds between two carbon atoms. Triple bonds are stronger than double bonds or single bonds because larger charges involved, more electrons involved, tend to lead to larger strengths of these bonds. Stronger bonds 
tend to be shorter bonds. And so you'll notice that as you go from single bonds to double bonds to triple bonds, you see that the bond length is becoming shorter, 154, 134, 120, in this case of single, double, and triple bonds between two carbon atoms.